Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. A fight with our entitled neighbor took us to court, where we won. The second story. Entitled lawyer was banned from our bar for the threatens to sue over a $5 beer. The third story. Dude is demanding that we get fired because we don't want to violate store policy for his sake. The first story is... Our crazy neighbor. Legend. M is mom. EN is entitled neighbor. SF is stepfather. J is judge. Context. So about a year ago, my mom bought a house since she's getting old. She wanted to have something to leave for her sons or grandkids when she passes away one day. Around the same time we moved someone was moving to the neighbor's house, which shares a facade with our house. In the room where we set our kitchen there's this human sized window in the first owner put, because his patio was the two houses in one. The thing with this window is that it leads to our neighbor's garden patio. My mom never intended to use it as respect for our neighbors, and the few times we actually opened it was to let our dumb cats in, because they decide to contour the house. The thing is, our neighbor was actually an EN. Their first conversation went something like this. EN at the said window. Hey neighbor. M. Good morning. EN. So, we need to talk about this window. I don't like it, so you're gonna have to close it. And she pretty much just left it at that, leaving my mom kinda astonished. Both our houses were under constructions at the time, so they didn't really have time to talk much. My mom works during night shifts delivering subscription newspapers from midnight till 900 which means she sleeps during day hours. She tries not to complain since it's not people's fault, and she still also tries to keep an active day life, but she does have to rest a bit before work, say around 1800 till 2330. The problem is that our EN decided to keep constructions at her house going till 20, and sometimes even 22, making it difficult for my mom to have enough rest. My mom is someone who tries to keep good relations with her neighbors, so the first and second night she just ignored, although she didn't get any rest. But the third night being fed up with all the noise, she went in her pajamas to the neighbor's door to ask if she could stop with the noise, which crossed our EN. From there on she became B to my mom. She set a satellite dish on our facade. The facade we share becomes my family's facade once outside. My mom didn't complain. For some reason we also share an attic on our side. The door, that was broken at the time, leads to inside our house in the corridor. On hers it's an exterior door. One day during winter, Ian decided to leave her attic door open. We were freezing because our broken door and her open door caused a cold airflow into our house. My mom asked nicely if she could close it, to which Ian replied, Doesn't bother me so I don't care. You can close it yourself if you want. My mom got a bit mad, but swallowed her pride and closed the door herself. Few months go by, and I wake up one morning to some angry voices in our kitchen. Concerned, I decided to get there to see what was the fuss. EN was building a wall, like she's MF Trump, in front of our window. I stand corrected, in our window rail, to seal our window off. Luckily my mom woke up early that day, saw something weird in front of the window, opened it and asked calmly and politely with a smile, Good morning sir, how you doing? Would you like a coffee? May I ask what you're doing? The guy answered that he was building a wall to shut the window just as the lady EN asked. My mom told him to step back and push that wall effing off our window rail. Ian was not at all happy so a big fight started, and when I say fight, no no no, they were screaming harder and harder at each other, and my mom started bringing everything she kept quiet about, but things started getting quite bad when I got there. Ian was losing the fight, so she grabs a piece of broken concrete and throws it at my mom. My SF was there, a thing about my stepfather is that he's a strong 6 foot tall German man, usually he's a care bear, but when Ian threw the rock at my mom, I had to push both my mom and SF back behind me. Otherwise, it was about to get bloody. Now, imagine me, a 22-year-old small 5'6 tall man, in my boxers and no-sleeve t-shirt, in front of a woman throwing pieces of concrete, trying to avoid that my SF goes loco on this bee. I snapped, got one foot on the window rail, and screamed with my deepest Skyrim shout. If she grabs another freaking piece of concrete, she's gonna effing regret it. Ian's sister tried to threaten me, like I don't know what she wanted to prove, but she kept saying we have a lot of men inside, as if women couldn't fight too like. I pushed my mom back too for two good reasons, protecting my mom and to protect the neighbors, cause if you cross my mom deeply, she'll come at you like the hybrid of a pit bull and a rottweiler. Anyway, that fight led to an agreement in court using a mediator which I'll call judge. My mom won and I wasn't there, 
but here's some little gags of what happened. 1. Ian started the meeting screaming and complaining, and Jay had to tell her multiple times to shut up and sit. 2. The reason she wanted the window shut and the answers given by J or M. Ian, she could enter my house and steal something. J, madam, we're in 2020. There's something called cameras and alarms. Just put some and problem solved. Ian, okay, but she could throw trash into my patio. J, madam, don't be mad. Why would someone do that when they could easily be caught? Ian, I also don't want her to hear our conversations, and I don't want to hear theirs. M, trust me, we don't need a window to hear what you say in your house. You scream pretty much all the time, so we can hear you anywhere. 3. The Satellite Dish So apparently she thought that since the wall from our facade was on her side, it belonged to her. J. Madam, I'm sorry to break it to you, but that only applies to the inside walls that you share. The outside walls are not yours anymore. So if M wants you to take the satellite dish off the wall, you have to do it. 4. She wasn't marking any points, so she decided to start lying. E. N. She closed my attic door from the inside without my permission and refuses to open it again, and I want to change it, which she never asked. M whispering, you're such a liar. J, excuse me, madam, but if you wanted it open so badly, why didn't you ask your husband to force the lock and put a new lock on the outside, or change the door like you intended? It is your door, after all. In the end, everyone was fed up with her. M, S, F, and J couldn't stop laughing of how she kept trying to be right when she was wrong. My mom agreed to put a fixed window and put translucent paper on the window, and the neighbor had to stop all works on the window, wall, take the satellite dish and my mom even got a free paint job to her wall. Conclusion, entitlement doesn't pay. The second story is, Entitled Lawyer Threatens to Sue Over a $5 Beer So this happened earlier in the summer. I work as the tap room and outside event manager for a medium scale craft brewery. This built up over several different days, which I will summarize as briefly as possible before I get to the last incident. During the summer, we have several outside events featuring our beer. The staff for our tasting room are largely the same as our event staff. During one such event, we had an early 70s age man who essentially hovered around our booth, talking to our female bar staff, which is not at all unusual. However, this guy was truly annoying our staff. With one girl in particular, he kept telling her that he's a part of this huge lawsuit and believes that my bartender should take part in it. He even asks for her name so that he can come find her at our tap room if she doesn't help him. This was said seriously, not flirtatiously. We have no solid idea of what it was he was even in a lawsuit over. He just rambled so much it was almost impossible not to tune him out. This repeated in much the same way at several events. He would be overbearing and rambling to our servers when we were clearly busy. We all knew about him at this point, and all hated dealing with him. He never really did anything to warrant any action on our part, other than kindly telling him that's really interesting. I'm super busy right now. Let me get back to you in a sec. We kind of sympathized because he didn't really seem all there. About a month after the first encounter with this guy, we had a busy day with three separate events. This guy showed up at every single one of them. He didn't have more than a beer at each event over the course of the entire day, so I never believed he was intoxicated. But every time he would ramble on and on about what I was suspecting were entirely made up or entirely frivolous lawsuits. The final event of the day was a roller derby event that I was serving by myself. All available staff had worked events earlier in the day, so I was doing it myself, and I had been to each prior event and saw how much he had drank. Of course, this guy shows up again. He didn't appear intoxicated to me, so I served him one beer. He paid in cash and didn't really say much to me. He was only overbearing with our female staff. What happened next all happened within a few minutes, all of it handled by the venue staff until the final incident. This was before the roller derby bout even started. What he claimed was a service dog was growling and barking at people and kept getting in the way of the players warming up. Pets are not allowed with the exception of service dogs. The staff asked him to move for the dog's safety. He could get crashed into by fast moving skaters. He scoffed and said, you should learn some respect for your elders. The staff ignored that comment and calmly repeated the request to move. So he moved to a couch which is reserved for a raffle winner as the best seat in the house. The staff came back over and tried to nicely explain this to him. He responded by loudly saying, I'm an old man, and I won't be told by some fat C where I can and can't sit. She immediately tells him he needs to leave and is banned from the venue. He keeps shouting at her, and then comes to my serving station, and slaps his empty beer cup and credit card onto the counter, saying that fat B over there is making me leave. I demand you refund me for my beer and my ticket for this disrespect. Internally screaming, I calmly told him he finished his beer, so I would not be refunding him, that I can't refund his ticket as I didn't sell it to him. The venue did. He went red in the face and said, Oh, you've just made a huge mistake. I'm going to bring you to court. I'm going to sue you and sue your whole effing company. 
Unable to contain myself at the absurdity of him threatening to sue over a $5 beer and a $15 ticket, I laughed in his face and told him, no you won't, go F yourself, leave. He went wide-eyed and stammered how we were all going to regret this, as security came up and escorted him out. Dude is now only one of three people banned from our bar. I told the company owners immediately, and they weren't very happy with my choice of words, but since the venue corroborated my story, I wasn't punished. It's been half a year and we've had no sign of him since. And the last story is, I can't use your restroom, you need to be fired. I work for a private business within a strip mall. In Texas, and as a private business, we have the option on whether to open our restrooms to the public or not. Our store used to have public restrooms, but had to make it employees only, following the C word. Me, KR, awesome coworker, AC, boss man, BM, and big ol' B, Bob. The day was going how a typical day in lovely retail goes, until maybe an hour before the store closes. That's when Bob shows up. He grabs a shopping cart and starts walking away from me and AC towards the bathrooms at the other end of the store. The store was somewhat empty, so it was easy to hear Bob as he yells. Bob, can I use your restroom? This is a common question, so I'm used to saying, KR, sorry sir, but the bathrooms are not open for the public right now. The nearest store with open bathrooms is a few stores down the strip. Bob replies in kind. Bob, what, seriously? Well I was going to drop $600 on your little store, but I guess you don't want my money. My store is a high traffic store, especially for its small size. $600 from one person is not that uncommon honestly. Plus my fellow employees and I were never ones to kneel towards these kinds of customers. KR, sorry sir, that's just how this store operates. Like I said, there's a store a few doors down the strip that has public bathrooms. Bob pulls out his phone and with the drama of an eccentric soap opera star, Siri, find me another better store nearby. This place is undesirable. As Bob is walking with our cart, while also still barking at us, he shoves the cart which then slams into the store front window. Luckily the glass didn't even crack. The whole time Bob is still barking at AC, and I as he approaches the counter. That's when AC chimes in. AC, have a good day sir. AC is very calm and level headed, but she is still firm and never wavers. Bob lets out such a shrill over not getting into our heads. KR, yes sir, please take care. Bob reels his head back and just squeals like a pig. My story doesn't end here though. One minute later the store phone rings. KR, retail store in city town. My name is Kakoa Recruit, how may I help you? Bob, get me your manager. I realize from the voice it's our favorite customer, so I gladly comply with his request. KR, of course sir, one moment. Now what I did not mention was that BM was standing just out of view behind the counter the entire time Bob was in the store. BM just never interfered because he knows his employees can handle ornery customers ourselves. BM, hello, BM here. BM immediately swings the phone away from his ear because Bob was screaming into the phone loud enough for me and AC to hear. Bob, yes I was just in your store and I've never been so discriminated against in my entire life. KR, discriminated? Bob. That blonde BAC and that other F or me refused to let me use your restroom when I politely asked, and then proceeded to laugh at me and call me names. BM, is that so? What did they say to you, sir? Bob, you know, things like dumb A and loser. For that, I need them fired right now. Me and AC are trying our best not to laugh audibly from the lies Bob is trying to sell. BM, alrighty, sir, I'll get right on that. Hey, blonde B and other effer. Some random customer wants you two fired, so by the laws of Narnia, I hereby dub the F word. BM also has a flair for the dramatics as well. Bob is livid and begins to yell even louder at BM over the phone. BM, yaha, uh -huh. take care sir, click. Subscribe, hit the like button and have a good day.